You can now train Flux, the AI image generating model in a number of images, including a person, yourself, or a product, and then replicate that person or product in pretty much any way you want. Let me show you what I mean by this. So recently I trained it on myself and see if I could appear as I was giving a TED talk. And now, excuse the uh, <laughs> excuse the get up my clothes, but that's what I was wearing when I took the training photos of me. And for the most part, these are relatively pretty good. I need to fix the prompting and the rest will be really good. Especially this one, that one's I think is the realest one. Whilst I would never be nearly as smart to give a TED talk, regardless, it's nice to dream. The only way where it, the only time where it really stuffed up is where I wanted a lot of people in the image, but because it was, because it was trained on me, it seemed to create a room full of me's, which is quite terrifying. But I think that's not the most important thing about this whole thing, the fact that you can train an, a language, an image generation model on something. Let me give you an example that, that will make you want to use this tool tomorrow. I have a friend of mine who has a car rental business called Kawaskar and he rents these vans which you can travel around all around in South America. They're all a lot of fun, they're really good, but getting images created, getting images for that takes a lot of money because he needs to give one of the cars to the photographer, that's a car away from his fleet that he can't rent. He also needs to pay the photographer, the photographer needs to edit it and it ends up costing quite a bit of money. I told him to give me 20 images of his trucks and then I started creating these images that are generated by Flux, just a train model, and it created his truck on different places within the Patagonia. None of these are real, they're all AI generated. So you start seeing here the value of this. I'm gonna show you how you can train your own Flux to yourself or to a product that you might have. By the way, if you don't know me, my name's Nico. I run an online community, the AI Ranking School community, where we teach you how to use all these tools to maximize your search engine optimization. If you wanna check that out, I'll leave that link in the description below. So I made another video on how you can start using Flux today with Fall AI. The reason why you want to use it with Fall AI, and there's a lot of other platforms that allow you to use this, but is because to run Flux locally, particularly to train Flux locally, you need a machine that has about uh, 26 gigabytes of RAM alone, which my MacBook doesn't have, it's got 16, which is good, but not good enough. If you wanna follow a tutorial that will show you how to sign up to Flux, I'll leave a video that I've already made about this below, but I'm gonna assume that you've already made an account with Fall AI, like I've showed you before, and let's go and train a model. So what you're gonna do is <laughs> go on the first thing that says here, going to Flux is here, train Flux, a Flux Laura. You're gonna click that, and you can see that I've got, I've got a couple of trained Flux Lauras already. Now, I was a bit confused at how to do that in the first time, but I suggest you do the following. You can add the image directly here, or you can upload a zip file of about 10 to 20 images. I suggest that around 20 images, you start getting a better output. Really, really importantly, if you look at the images and data URL, this part, it says, in addition to the images, the archive can contain text files with captions. This is really important. Each text file should have the same name as the image to, to correspond to it. The caption should include the special trigger, string trigger, I'll get to that in a second. If the trigger word is specified, it will replace the trigger in the caption. So from what I could understand and the research that I've done, this kind of meant the following. So I've got a bunch of images that I took of myself, for example. So this was just today, I was playing around with the camera. Um, that is my silly ass here. But what you need to have in the same, with the same name is text files. And this is what I think you had to do, at least it worked out for me anyway, with the same name. So if we look at here, we've got the training photo underscore one, and that describes the image. Nico stands confidently with his arms crossed, ready to check on a challenge. The second one is with a knowing look, Nico points directly to the camera, emphasizing his focus. And if we look at number two image, that's me pointing at the camera. And the trigger word starts becoming Nico. So the, the trigger word is the one that you keep on repeating that all the file text files should have somewhere in between. From my understanding, that's what you should do. So what you wanna do after that is once you, once you have all your images and your text files accordingly, I selected all the images and I selected all the corresponding text files and then I compressed them. So there's about 20 
images and 20 text files is about 40 files all together I compress them pressing that and then when I have that file which is the archive file here well then you can upload that into here once you do archive that there's a couple of things once you upload that file that's uploaded there you want to go to more and go down the steps you can leave as a hundred the trigger word is the one you want to place here and for me it's going to be Nico and hopefully it'll understand with all those files that I've placed there that that's the trigger word which then I need to put into prompts later on um, and that's it the the rest are left a list as it is rank everything else and you click start and once you do this will start populating here and you can see it's starting the progress here. It takes about $5 for a LoRa to be trained on any specific images that you want. I've already trained a couple so we can play around with these. So if I run the interface here, it tells me already a portrait of Nico that comes pre-populated because that is the trigger word that I placed in those photos. And all I need to do is kind of write the prompt. Now, before I do that, I found that I really had to experiment with the guidance and the scale of this and even the number of inferences steps because if I do it right away now without any other prompts and I run it, you'll see or that I don't think it'll look like me. Maybe it will, but generally it doesn't. Great, so I ran it and that actually is not too bad, to be honest. Uh, it's me with a little gray hair. It doesn't look exactly like me, but that's pretty good nonetheless. Let's see a portrait photo of Nico drinking a tea. Let's see if that does anything. That actually wasn't too bad, the first one. Usually it was a little bit worse. Um, yep, yeah, now I just look a bit weird, but the background is of the white images that I gave it, and that's fine. Uh, let's do something a little bit more complex. So, a photo, portrait photo of Nico giving a TED talk. Let's see if that works okay. And that's actually, again, not too bad. I've been having better results now for some reason. So, usually I would have to put the guidance up to six, but 3.5 seems to be working at the moment. If we go run, yeah, they seem to be okay. Maybe some more time, <laughs> maybe now I'm getting everything okay, but you need to really play around with the prompts. I find that the more simple the prompts, it tends to be a lot better. What I do find too is, is if at the moment, if I'm wanting to put myself meeting someone famous, then both of us kind of look the same like me, but in a mixture of someone else. And that is pretty much it. The only difference if you want to train this on an actual product is that the trigger word needs to be the product that you want or you only put photos, 20 images of that product, ideally get every angle, but you use the same inferences. That's exactly what I did to train the, the van, the Kawaskara van. And with that, you get similar, similar results. So let's go back to that one. I can go back to my trained Laura's. I'll go back to training with Laura and I think I made this one was the van itself. This one's still going. It takes about 20 minutes to train all up. I'm going to run inferences. And that's not the one because that's training portrait of Nico. I think it was the second one. Yeah, training portrait. A photo portrait of Kawaska. A front portrait photo of Kawaska. Um, we see the... A portrait photo of Kawaskar. Kawaskar is a trigger word and that's a product in this instance. And then we see the Patagonian mountains in the background in a beautiful sunset. See, that's not 100% right, but let's see if we change it a little bit. A side front portrait in Kawaskar. We're going to change the guidance scales here to five and the number of steps to 45. That's what I was usually getting a better result in. And this is really all about uh, experimentation. You need to experiment which default or which settings get you the best results. Now, with an image and sometimes with yourself, this tends to happen where it's no, it actually, it's actually nothing to do with what you trained it on. What I find is that you need to reiterate what it is that it was trained on. For this instance, it was a white van. So let's try the same prompt, but let's say the white van and we're gonna say with the Kawaskut logo on the side of it. And that's all we've placed. So the side in the side, 
side front portrait photo of Kawaska. The white van has the Kawaska logo on the side. We see the Patagonia mountains in the background in a beautiful sunset. Let's see what that happens. Boom. Perfect. A lot better. So you see how reiterating what it is, the subject that we trained it on, then is pretty spot on. And that's it. And I think you can, I've seen people do handbags. I've seen people do a lot of other things. And I think considering this is just the start of this, imagine six months down the track, I don't think there'll be the need for a photo shoot session, which is kind of scary. And this is probably going to take care, take a lot of jobs away. Anyway, uh, again, if you want to learn more of how to use these tools to maximize your search engine optimization, or if you want to stay up to date with all the latest AI tool, I also recommend you check out our, our ranking hub community. It's a lot of fun. We update it quite regularly. Um, and yeah, that's it. If you want to learn how to use your Flux trained LoRa in a automation, let me know in the comments below. And if you found any value in this video, I ask that you subscribe and like the video. I did spend a little bit of money uh, trying to figure this out and training it, so that would really help the channel. Cheers.